Hello, and welcome to the second installment of Vectorworks for Senior Design. My name is Joshua Shulman, and I'm joined by Jim Woodward. Today, we will be continuing our work on our conceptual design for an award show. We will be using some additional modeling tools, creating some interesting textures, exploring the AI visualizer, and using the deform tools to add some additional elements to our model. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Hey, Josh, nice to get together again. Well, hey, we worked on this wall a little bit. You were talking about it was a little too tall, so I knocked a couple of rows down. And I think you want to replace this tile. Why don't you uh, give me a shot at doing that first? Yeah, sounds good. What were you thinking? I was thinking like a couple of um, trapezoids, uh, maybe like one coming up and like one going down kind of so idea. Let's start with the basic shape and make sure that that is in the center of the drawing. We'll extrude that to 0.25. Now let's take the poly gun tool. We'll go, how's this first shape? Somewhere in a, this range? Yeah. Make half of that and just use the mirror tool. Select both of those. A little easier to get that symmetrical. Nice. Let's pop that up just a little bit. We'll use the mirror tool. Before I do, let's extrude that to the same thickness. And then we'll make the other side. I now have two of those flaps, but I'm going to duplicate. And I'm going to select the first two in that shape. And let's use the subtract solids. And that'll leave me with those two in the right spot. Said so you wanted to do an opposing flaps on that. So let's look at from the side. Yeah, I was thinking like maybe like 30 degrees up and 30 degrees down. Sounds good. Let's do this one. We'll go from the bottom edge, bring that down to 30 degrees. And then let's select the other one. And we'll do that opposing. This time we'll grab the top edge once again, 30 degrees. That will leave us with this. Nice. Let's okay, let make a symbol out of that. And we'll just call this new tile for right now. Make sure it's in the right spot. Keep our drawings clean. And at that point, all we have to do is go back to our front elevation with the select similar tool, replace with the new tile. Well, Josh, we got that back while well taken care of. What do you want to do next? Uh, Jim, how about the band risers? Right. We want to go into in between these two stairways, correct? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Let's start off with an arc. This side. We'll grab those two edges. 90 degrees. Next one I want to do, I want to do the edge to connect the arc. To the center stair. We've got those taken care of. Let's do the polyline in between the railing into those edges. Now, I don't want this to be right up against the edge of the stairs. So let's compose those all together. We now have one polyline, and then using the offset tool, We'll bring that in a distance of two inches. That way it's not touching the stairs. Now from there, let's extrude that. We'll give it a height of 48 inches. Leaves us with that. Now let's create some of the steps in that. Let's start off with, I was thinking maybe have a ledge all the way around the back yeah side yep. curves let's yep. start with that one. this is one of my favorite tools the offset edge tool we'll start with the edge mode and select those three curves and then bring this in exactly 24 inches going right into the push pull mode i'm going to say go down 48 
40 inches, and that'll leave me with an eight inch step. Using that same tool, let's bring this in 12 inches, create the first step, and we'll bring that up another eight inches. That worked pretty good. We'll go one more, 12 inches, eight inches. Now, I was thinking maybe a step those guys can sit on, and maybe we'll do these two curves. Let's come in 24 inches, up eight inches again, one more time. Twelve inches, and then up eight. What do you think of that? I like how this is shaping up, Jim. Well, I'd love to see some fascia on the on the front of these. Uh, maybe some backlit plexi. Yeah. So I found a new trick with the uh, fillet edge tool. I want to show you. See if you like this. I'm going to select a variable radius radius, and we're going to go three inches. At 25%, 6 inches at 50, and 3 inches at 75. It's going to give us kind of an hourglass shape. See if you like this. And we'll select these four edges and apply that variable radius to. Ooh. All right, let's use the offset edge one more time to create a pocket for that plexi. We're going to use the edge loop mode, and I'm going to use that and i'm going to come down two inches and i'm going to bring this back minus two and that gives us a nice cove what do you think of that jim i love how this is shaping up well josh looks like we got the 3d modeling under control what would you like to move on to next how about some texturing jim Okay, let's create some textures. We're going to need a few here. Let's start with, um, how about the metal finish you were talking about you wanted for the deck? Yeah, like that warm, bronzy kind of idea. All right, let's start with that. Go to RenderWorks Texture, and this will be Stage Finish. From there, let's select Metallic. I'm going to stay with the Legacy and... Guide me in on the color here. Thinking of bronzish, something maybe like this. Like a warmy orange kind of idea, yeah. Okay, we'll start with that. How about, uh, oh, maybe 65% reflectivity. We'll bump up the blurriness a little bit as well. I'm going to bring the object size down to 2.5, make that a little smaller. Also, how about a little bit of scratch onto this, a little bit of depth. We'll edit that. I'm thinking... Here's one I've tried before. See if you like this one. Go with that. That's How's interesting. That yeah. Let's try that. Here's our stage finish. We also need to create one for this LED backlit panel. So let's go back. In this one, we'll select texture, create, and we'll call this LED panels. The color. What do you think of like a warm, something in a warm color? Uh, maybe something in the cool zone, so that way it's like a complementary to yeah. the, yeah. Let's go with kind of like a dark blue. Yeah, no, that's good. We can brighten that up with uh, the glow. And then after this, we want to apply a glow to it, but we don't want this to be too bright. Let's bring this down maybe about 35%. Mm -hmm. how's that look yeah i think this is going to turn out great okay and this one two ways to apply these i can select this object go to the resource manager and in this one i'm going to select to the overall and just select that texture this one's with the stage finish let's bring up our ambient light Maybe 60%. Yeah, that shows that off a little better. We'll see we have the reflectivity. And then we want to put the blue into this inset. With that, what we want to do is go over to Perface Texturing through the Texture tool. With the second mode, we can apply to any face that we choose. We do want to make sure that we have the right 
texture applied. And there we go. So that's an easy way to apply the textures. That's pretty cool, Jim. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Well, the last one, you were talking about that AI feature that uh, we would love to show off. So why don't we go for that one next? Yeah, Jim. So what if we, uh, I sent you a text uh, that had like a bunch of prompts in it. And I was thinking we could see what the AI comes up with and throw it on those video screens. Sounds good. Let me go look for that. And I'll open up the AI visualizer. We can find that in the model menu. And we'll open this up. And you'll see I have the Vectorworks images set up, but we want to just do this from, you said, a text prompt. Mm -hmm. So let's go here and let's look for that text. I got it over on another screen. Let me copy that and then we'll paste. There it is. Wallpaper bubbles, black and white, oil paint. Wow, this sounds cool. Let me try to give this a first round. When we do get this image generated, we can copy that to a clipboard and paste it, or we can save that to a file. Let's save this to a file on our desktop. Looking good. You get something different every time. Uh, think of how long that would take to come up with. Oui. I like it. That's cool. First round. Wow. Yeah, look at the yeah. on that. All right. Let's save this to a file. And uh, what we're going to call that screen image, because we're going to put that on those video projector. Um, screen yeah. image. And we'll call that screen image. We'll save that. Then going back into the resource manager. Let's create a new texture. And this one's going to be just call it screens for right now if we spelt it right there we go and then we're going to go into color and select the image we're going to import an image file of course screen image one don't want to tile that of course and then let's put a little bit of a glow make that image pop let's go maybe um let's try 45 percent Now we need to apply that. We'll just get rid of that. Let's go to the video elements. And then we'll edit the screen image and apply that. That is a quick way to get an image. Woo! Looking good, Jim. Copyright free to boot. <laughs> uh, it's ideation it's just a, it's just a place to get the conversation started right yes absolutely but a good place to start we can put some image effects all kinds of good stuff josh looks like we got the texturing taken care of so what do you want to move on to next you had some scenic elements you sent a snapshot of yeah jim so um what i was thinking was like a 14 foot tall uh louvered twisting column sort of like in a half circle all right. uh, it has like an hourglass like bulge to it in the middle uh and then there's sort of a twist at the top in order to sort of give it a little bit of flair all right let's see if we can get that let's go into an overhead view there let's start with that arc and about uh how how wide that was about um six foot six foot so let's start with the 36 radius and from there also want to do uh, some slats and you were thinking slats about what five six inches wide yeah like maybe like five by one all right let's try that at uh, five by one we'll get those to the center and now let's select just that rectangle how about we give that a little bit of a an angle we'll try that oh, that's nice yeah mm -hmm. let's also now go back we'll select both of those and duplicate a long path let's start maybe 18 to start let's see what those look like that looks pretty cool maybe a little more how about 20. and you were saying you want that um about 12 feet or 14 feet yeah about 14 feet tall jim let's get that Come over here and get that into view. Now, I want to do a little bit of an hourglass shape. I got just a tool for that. Let's go to the bulge tool in the deform. 
the bulge mode and then let's select that one more time and i'll let you call this one a little bit more keep going nice perfect and that turned it into 20 solid so before we do anything else let's add that into one and then you want it to bend this will be our last step and that will use the deform tool again in the bend and i'm in finite length mode we'll select from the front about a third up yeah about oh. a third of the way up jim all right we'll try that and you call it again perfect that looks pretty good. And before we do anything else, let's make a symbol out of that. Mm -hmm. And we'll go into this. Let's go back. How's that looking? I like it, Jim. I think we could start with that. All right, well, let's uh, go back and we'll put that into the drawing. Let's take a look at this from the side and we want to move that over, I think, in between the stairs and the backdrop. You call it, Josh. Yeah, somewhere back up there, Jim. That looks good. All right, we got that. Let's look at this from the front and let's select the band riser and that. And we're going to use the mirror tool. How's that? Looks nice, Jim. A couple of save views with some timed animations will show us our finished product. So we hope you've enjoyed this design exercise and that it has given you some ideas about how to use different modeling and texturing techniques inside Vectorworks. As we've shown, it can be easy and fun to model on the fly in a freeform environment. If there's more you'd like to learn about Vectorworks, please go to the Vectorworks University at university.vectorworks.net where you can find all sorts of more in-depth tutorial videos. Thanks.